is uh, just a little kind of chat about medical cannabis and CBD and how it works with your body and how it can be helpful. Um, my name is Kathleen McKinnon. I'm the president and co-founder of Alternative Wellness Centers. I've been working in the cannabis industry for about 10 years now in the healthcare industry for one than one. I'm also a registered dental hygienist, so we totally work on uh, full body health and wellness, and that includes body, mind, and spirit. And so coming into the cannabis space and kind of seeing the need for, for that, um, seeing it disjointed between the mainstream doctors and the patients that want to use cannabis and their kind of lack of knowledge through no fault of their own. Um, we found that there is a great need for education out in the community, both in the medical community and um, in the communities that we live in. So that's what we do is we aim to kind of help demystify things and shed some light and answer questions about how medical cannabis works and you know how it might help help you or somebody you know. Um, with me is Emily Albert. She's from Green Thumb Industries. She's the field marketing manager over this side. Um, she has a bachelor's degree in marketing from the University of Rhode Island. She's got over seven years experience in brand building and education, uh, two in the cannabis industry, and she also has a passion for educating the community uh, about cannabis issues as well. And she's here from Rise Dispensary. So we're two separate entities. Dispensaries are the places that you can go and purchase your products from. And uh, alternative wellness centers is the medical aspect of it where you can get a medical card and be consulted with uh, a medical provider at any time, have any questions answered. Uh, we find that people who are taking a lot of medications tend to work better on the medical side with doctors and because they have these some interactions, and we'll get into that a little bit further. So, what is cannabis and how does it work? So cannabis is a plant that grows in the ground. It's been around for you know thousands and thousands of years, um, and, it, and there's many different ingredients in it. Uh, there, all the parts are useful: the, the roots, the stalks, the leaves, the flowers, the seeds, um, and all of the ingredients that come in cannabis, grow in cannabis, all work together to bring you the best health, wellness, and outcome that you can achieve. And we call that the um, entourage effect. So some of the ingredients in the cannabis plant are things called cannabinoids, uh, terpenes, and flavonoids. And we'll touch on the cannabinoids and terpenes because they're, they're really important. So one of the first things uh, that we like to talk about is cannabinoids because pretty much everybody has heard of THC. That's the main cannabinoid in cannabis that gets everybody hot. That's what Reef of Madness was all about, you know. Next thing you know, Susan, there's 20 people living in a house and they're all smoking Reefer. Um, but that's, that's where it comes from, right? THC, that is the one that does give you that psychoactive effect. There's also other ones, there's more than 100 cannabinoids that work to give you health benefits that not necessarily, that do not necessarily have that um, psychotropic effect. So CBD is one of the ones that you see all over now. It's in everything. CBD hand cream, shampoos, you can get CBD facials, manicures, pedicures. Uh, you can buy it in the grocery store. You can buy it at Honey Farms. Uh, there's, there's pet CBD. Uh, it's everywhere. And one of the things that we, we teach and we like to talk about is uh, just because you can buy it everywhere doesn't necessarily mean you should. It's all about label reading and knowing what you're getting. Because we find that people, companies, manufacturers will label something as CBD, but basically all they're giving you are hemp seeds crushed in. And it says it right on the label. It'll, it'll tell you they have to list it. And if they don't, I wouldn't buy it. Um, so CBD is great for inflammation, definitely helps with pain relief as well. Um, there's CBG, which is a very good um, cannabinoid for gut health. So anybody that has like gut issues, IBS, Crohn's, things like that, CBG is a really good cannabinoid that'll target that and work on that. CBN, 
Uh, and so Saturday, yeah, we're going to go help you sleep. And we see that uh, helping people get off other heavier drugs, narcotics, things like that. Uh, strains with a higher concentrate of CBN really help them. Um, CBC, it's really good for bone health. THCV, they're finding now that uh, this is something like an appetite uh, decreases the appetite. It's, they're, they're doing studies now for uh, diabetics with this particular cannabinoid. So we're excited to see where those lead. So as I was talking before about CBD that you can buy out of the counter and medical cannabis CBD, uh, there is a difference. Medical cannabis CBD is grown from the actual um, plant. It's grown without very minimal THC. So it's 0.3% uh, THC or less. Um, it is more potent than CBD that you're going to be able to get over the counter in any store. This is, comes from the hemp plant. They can process it again from the seeds, the stalks. Um, it's not going to have as much CBD content in it. You'll get about three and a half, four percent up to 20 percent if you get the medical cannabis you know, CBD. Um, and then also it's a remedial plant which means Wherever it's grown in that soil, it picks up whatever's been grown in that soil or whatever's contaminated, um, whatever that's supposed to may be contaminated with. So if it's grown in a different country, you really want to be aware of that. So label reading, when you're purchasing over-the-counter CBD products, even topicals, things like that, read the label, find out where it's manufactured, what it's made from uh, before you spend your money. Because we're finding that I don't, I'll go in and I'll see these CBD products for $60 at the grocery store, and I can go into the dispensary and get it for 40 and it's much more effective, or it's more potent. Um, and I know where it comes from, because everything in the dispensaries here in Massachusetts has to be lab tested. Everything that they put out, everything they sell, everything they grow, Anything that anybody consumes all has to be independently tested through a third body laboratory. So and that Massachusetts was one of the first states to require that, and many states around the country have followed suit. Another one of the ingredients besides cannabinoids is terpenes. Uh, terpenes are the compounds that give, it, or give all kinds of fruits, vegetables, plants. Uh, their taste and their smell. So if you want to take a bath and you want to add some lavender to it because it's going to help you relax, so you want to light a lavender candle, what's, do, what's doing that is the terpene, the scent. That is actually working on your body to help you relax. There are many different terpenes in cannabis. They grow within the plant. This is one of the ingredients where it, uh, yeah, how it grows. So not only do they have cannabinoids, but they have terpenes. And in your little goodie bags that you have, you'll also find some decks that list different cannabinoids and terpenes with their medical benefits and also where they're found in nature. So for example, linalool, which is found in lavender, laurel, and mint, is a sedative, an anticonvulsant, and an antidepressant. Right? It's going to make you relax. It's going to help you calm down. Whereas uh, something like uh, humulene might be more of an uplifting or actually lead logic is more of an uplifting type of uh, terpene. Is that only here? Yes. Yes. There's two different ones. There's a cannabinoid and a, and a terpene. Yeah. Yes. Um, so these terpenes also have medicinal benefits as well. And so when you Find something that kind of works for you if you're using these products, and uh, we, we suggest journaling. Uh, but if you find a product that really works for you, you want to look to see what terpenes are in there uh, and cannabinoids, because you might not be able to find that specific product uh, somewhere else if you need to, or maybe they don't have that particular strain anymore. You can use those terpenes and cannabinoids to find similar products that are going to work for you. So all of those working together, we call that the entourage effect, right? That's uh, the full spectrum, 
versus like a broad spectrum where you can isolate out the different cannabinoids and the terpenes. So when I was talking before about the CDG and the CDD and the CDN, you can get products that have more of specific terpenes because the way the manufacturers isolate them out. So they take the plant, they break it down, they harvest, for lack of a better word, those cannabinoids or terpenes, and then they can add them back in in whatever amount they choose. That's great, that's broad spectrum, but full spectrum, the whole plant together, is really where you're gonna get the best. Uh, and the more cannabinoids, the better. They all work synergistically, so they all help one another do their best. Then, like I said, we call that the entourage effect, and I like to think of that as baking a cake. So you got your eggs, you got your butter, your flour, your sugar, and they're all edible. But when you put them all together and you make that delicious chocolate cake, it's got to be chocolate. <laughs> uh, that's where it's going to be the best, right? That's going to taste the best. It's going to you're going to like, get the best reaction from it. Uh, same thing with cannabis. You want as many cannabinoids in there and terpenes to help you as, as you can. So why does it work? What, you know, why does cannabis work? How does it work on our body? We have what we call the endocannabinoid system. This was discovered in the early 90s by some scientists uh, in Israel. And basically, it, we have a whole host of receptors that go throughout our body. They're found in our peripheral nervous system, our immune system, our brain. Uh, and these receptors actually are responsible for receiving cannabinoids. So we use these cannabis products or we take in cannabis in some way, whether we ingest it, inhale it, uh, we're getting these cannabinoids into our bodies. We have these receptors. It's like a lock and click key. The cannabinoids bind with the receptors, open, provide relief in the body. Whether that's pain relief, whether it's a calming effect, whether it's an effect to motivate you and give you some energy, whether it's to help you sleep, give you an appetite, it all depends on what you need, right? Um, it's homeostasis. So it is making sure that we are functioning properly and trying to stay in balance. It's responsible for memory, sleep, uh, it's responsible for mood. And we find that, um, what's the spleen, S-P-E, spleen, was an L in it? Yeah. <laughs> Not on the list, son. <laughs> yeah. So we find that so the, these receptors, as I was saying, are found throughout our body. One of the places that they're not found is in the areas that will suppress a heart rate or breathing, which is why nobody will ever die of a cannabis overdose. As if, you know, like you could with uh, benzodiazepines or narcotics, things like that. It will never suppress the heart or the breathing to the point you know, where you're, where you're going to stop. They'll maybe take a nap if you take too much. That's not to say you can't ever take too much, um, but it will, it will never kill you. Uh, and there are ways people do overconsume THC, and there are ways to counteract that. Uh, using t CBD will help. Uh, spelling certain scents will help. Spelling like pepper, peppercorns, um, terpenes like periopoly, things like that will help you uh, kind of level it out if, if you ever uh, consume too much THC. Some people get a little anxious, things like that. So, uh, oh, back up one second. As I was saying about the, the endocannabinoid system, it regulates the mood, the appetite, pain, memory, and sleep cycles, um, and it does bind to provide relief. So, one of the things that we find, especially getting out into uh, the groups with the older populations, um, a lot of seniors are on at least five different medications. We find. They're, they're prescribed medications to combat side effects of the medications that they were prescribed to begin with. Um, and we see this so, so often in, in our medical society, doctors, they think that because you come through their door, they're obligated to write you a prescription. And a lot of times that's not the case. They just have to kind of listen and hear what you're saying before just taking out that, that pad or now it's just a tablet and send it off that, that 
medication for the pharmacy. Um, there are, using cannabis, there can be some interactions, and we like to talk about that. Uh, that's not to say that people can't use it. You just, if you're on certain drugs, you want to make sure that you're using it responsibly and in the right way. Um, one of the things that can affect cannabis with your body is age, weight, food, water intake, how you're feeling that day, how tired you are, uh, whether you've had a good meal. And we find that they're a replacement for a lot of these other medications that are up in the opioid pain relievers, the antizyalytics, antidepressants, sedatives, the NSAIDs, um, things like that. So, um, one of the problems, I guess, with the doctors out there today is they don't have enough research evidence to talk to their patients about cannabis on the regular. Uh, we are entering a, an age of what we're calling in this industry the research, research renaissance. Uh, the government did just allow over research licenses. There I believe have been five new ones just issued. They're doing studies now in the United States, which they haven't been able to do before. Uh, and it's been like a catch-22. They couldn't advance cannabis because they didn't have the studies to back it up. Yet they couldn't do any studies because it was federally illegal. So now, at least with the studies, uh, that door is being cracked open a bit. And over the next, you know, maybe 10 years, we'll start to see some leeway into that. Um, although I think the pharmaceutical companies see that they're losing millions of dollars to cannabis. They're going to start jumping on board and creating cannabis drugs and uh, then they'll be writing prescriptions for that and sending it to the pharmacy. Uh, so, you know, what they're saying now is, and this is uh, from 2017, but the estimated total savings to Medicare Part D would have been $468 million. And that's gone up now that other states have legalized and medical, have become medical uh, with cannabis as well. So, the Medicare program they're looking at, you know, saving close to a billion dollars with the federal legalization of cannabis and using that as a medicine and replacing it, some of these pharmaceutical drugs. So some of the medications that um, CBD specifically and some, some cannabis also that has CBD in it can interact with um, are, uh, Things like um, if you've ever been told not to take grapefruit juice with your medication, right? You want to make sure that you're not taking CBD at the same time. You want to space those out. You want to talk to your doctor about that uh, because what happens is the enzymes in the liver in the liver uh, metabolize your medications, and if you take them both at once, certain medications, it gets your liver's overtaxed. It's really trying to metabolize these medications and there can be uh, possibly a buildup of some medications in there. So you want to really make sure that you're, you're paying attention to that. Uh, if you're taking make sure that if you're using any form of THC, they space that out because that can act um, as more sedative on top of that opioid. Alcohol, the same thing. And then Warfarin, uh, the blood thinner. The, the newer blood thinners now, not so much, but Warfarin, um, you want to make sure that you're getting your INR checked because it can uh, change those levels. And that's not to say you can't use it, but you just want to be on top of it and make sure uh, that your dose and your levels are good. <clears throat> Some of the commonly treated ailments that we've seen over the past 10 years Chronic pain, that's actually the, the number one here in Massachusetts and usually across the country with states that have a medical program. Uh, spasms, it helps with uh, Parkinson's, it helps with MS. It's a muscle relaxant, it definitely improves mobility, helps with nausea. I mean, we see this in chemo patients, things like that. People with IV, um, people with you know, uh, intestinal problems. It helps to stimulate the appetite. 
It also helps to decrease the appetite. Now that I would start with cannabinoids. It helps with sleep. It's an anti-inflammatory. Parkinson's, that's the, the spasms, Alzheimer's disease. They're doing a study now. They're finding that uh, it's actually helping to reduce some of the amyloid plaque buildup from Parkinson's. So I'm excited to see what, what that's going to bring. Uh, it, it regulates our immune system, protects our nervous system. The United States government actually holds a patent on cannabis as a neuroprotectant and an antioxidant. So they know it has medical properties, they own a patent. They just haven't changed any of the classification of it. So it isn't a one size fits all drug, right? It's not, it's, it's not for everybody. Some people may tolerate it better than others. Some may need more than others. Uh, some may not be able to use THC, but they can use other cannabinoids. Uh, some might be a higher percentage of THC. It all depends on what you're looking for for relief. It's a very individualized medicine. Um, you want to make sure that you're tracking what you use. And we definitely encourage journaling, writing down what strain, what type of product, what's in it, uh, how it makes you feel. Because if it's not something that works for you, you don't want to go back and waste your money buying that product again. And if it does work, you want to make sure that you know that because that's what you want to focus on in those types of products. Um, you know, it is trial and error. You, you know, anytime you start on a new medication, if your doctor prescribes one, they're going to say, let's see you back in a month, see if we need to adjust that dose or whatever. Same thing with cannabis. It is definitely a trial and error. We always say start low and slow. You always want to start with the lowest dose possible, uh, especially edibles, because once you eat that gum, you can't uneat that gum. <laughs> but one of the good things now is the dispensaries are all uh, at five milligram servings. So they do start very low, which is good because, you know, I've seen dispensaries across the country and they sell you know, thousand milligram brownies, like that's that would that would make a less force. I mean, I don't know, I could never do that. But um, so you just really want to be aware of, of your milligrams and really low and slow. Uh, it doesn't need to be an either or, it doesn't have to be I have to use cannabis or I have to take my medicine. You can integrate both. And you don't need to stop immediately any medications. But we might find that over time, you might be able to come off some of the medications that you take. And then again, let your PCP or your specialist or anybody that you know, you're seeing that's prescribing, let them know if you do decide to try or use medical cannabis. Uh, there are risks and benefits like anything else. So some of the things that for the risks, sedation, Dizziness, disorientation, that's usually with higher THC uh, products. Anxiety, elevated heart rate again, that's usually you see that in strains that have a higher THC uh, content in them. Dry mouth, dry eyes, decreased blood pressure, uh, some cognitive impairment, and inhaling smoke, uh, or, you know, vapor, anything like that is always, you know, we always like to tell people that could be harmful to your lungs. Um, and then there is that potential for the interaction with prescription drugs. And then any adverse effects that you have with a sign that your dose is too high. And so were you. So, <laughs> um, but the benefits, so there are a lot of benefits. And we see people year after year after year coming back, and they're so thankful. Uh, when I first started working in this industry back in 2013, there were no dispensaries. There were no... Um, like the regulatory commission that oversaw it was the DPH and all it was was a doctor's signature on a piece of paper and people would come in and they had no idea about cannabis the doctors their pipe PCPs had no idea and they would be like do I have to tell my doctor and he's going to cut me off I don't want my doctor to know and we saw that over and over again for for years um and then we started getting interest from doctors like, wait a minute, how come my patients not taking this medication anymore? And why are they getting better? 
And, you know, the patients that were brave enough to talk to their doctors about it, we started hearing from their doctors. And so we started doing, getting out to the community and educating the medical community. And they, because it's not federally legal, they, if they're working for certain organizations, uh, getting federal money, taking federal insurance, things like that, they can't recommend cannabis. They can't do that. So um, the doctors that we worked with a lot of times are uh, they're retired doctors or they, like our medical director. He's still working. He he's an anesthesiologist. He's seventy five years old and that guy can run circles around me. Let me tell you. Still plays soccer every Sunday. Still runs the field and he's still working because there's a shortage of anesthesiologists. I guess. But he's, he's also a pain manager. He's been doing this. I've been working with him for 10 years now. Um, like the, we found that getting out into the community and, and educating the more doctors, the, the more doctors are getting, they're getting, uh, I don't want to say used to the idea, but now, 10 years later, it's definitely more open and accepted. Back then, it took a while for them to warm up because everybody was taught that this is a drug, you know, again, read for madness. It's, it's, you know, it's not a medicine. So a lot of benefits, uh, focus, pain relief, anxiety relief, definitely sleeping, nausea relief, uh, relaxes tight muscles. I like to say, you know, you see the tight ones walking around in the band, they just can't, it would be so tight, right? <laughs> um, reduces inflammation, almost every cannabinoid that's in cannabis has some sort of um, anti-inflammatory effect on the body. So it definitely helps with reducing inflammation both within the body and, you know, outside. Uh, appetite enhancement, uh, appetite decreasement as well, and then uh, replacement or addition to prescription drug treatment. So uh, dosage. Uh, the different products that we met are available. That will, there's different ways to consume. There's smoking or vaping. There's the edibles, tinctures, and then topples. Smoking and vaping is the quickest onset time. Uh, if you're having a panic attack and you need something immediately, vaping or smoking is going to be the, the, the easiest, quickest way to, to get that under control. We don't, know, we don't recommend inhaling, but people do it, and it helps for them. Edibles, uh, now they have what's called nanotechnology. So this one to two hours for edibles isn't, you know, doesn't necessarily take that long anymore. They have new technology out called nanotechnology, nano uh, emulsion. And these hit you within about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, they don't. So you really have to be aware of your dosing and where you are when you take it up as well. Um, tinctures, uh, this is, we see a lot of uh, the older crowd liking the tinctures. I use a tincture every day for, uh, just for maintenance. I use one that has five different cannabinoids in it, equal amounts, and uh, it's great. It's a uh, very low dose uh, THC, I think it's two and a half milligrams, and there's, like I said, four other cannabinoids as well that, that are all two and a half milligrams. I use it for preventative. I have neuropathy in my leg, so I use it just to help with the nerves um, and just as like a preventative boost to keep the endo, to keep my cannabinoids up in my system. Yeah, and I also use topical for it as well. Topical's my favorite. I slather myself in that. Um, topicals, it's like using Magnag, but better. Uh, and it helps immediately as soon as you put it on. I use it on my back, on my leg. Uh, it works great. And there are so many different kinds. Uh, another thing I use them on is um, like the cream because it's anti-inflammatory, ladies. So, you know, the, the, the eggs under the eyes, I put it on and it helps with that as well. Uh, but that that's the cream, not the balm. I use like the, there's, there's so many different kinds. Um, and those, like I said, those take effect within five to ten minutes and usually last for a few hours. Uh, and we do have some samples of things that we're going to show as well. So uh, on our website, which you have a 
little flyer in there so you can find us. Uh, we do have a downloadable journal. We do encourage everybody to kind of keep track of what you're using. This is a little quick, you know, check, and it, it helps. Um, different products that I was just talking about. So tinctures, this is the top, it's a liquid. It comes in like an eyedropper form. Uh, there's different beverages now. So there's, uh, there's sugar-free uh, seltzes, there's uh, juices, there's so many different products. Uh, mints, there's gummies, which are very popular. The soft uh, topicals, it also comes in cream form and then the chocolates. And, and I'll tell you, it, it, they, they can hit different too. So for example, a chocolate's gonna hit you a little bit slower, but it's gonna last longer because it's in, uh, it's in a, it's in a, the carrier is chocolate, it's a more of a fatty substance. Whereas with a gummy, it's more sugary, so that's easier to digest. And it doesn't, uh, it hits quicker and it doesn't stay as long. The chocolate or any type of fatty substance that you take with your edibles is going to help it last longer in the body. And then just a quick slide that I wanted to put up is uh, how to kind of read a label. So this is on some gummies and this is talking about uh, it's a uh, tangerine gummies. It was a, a hydrocarbon, CO2 hydrocarbon and ethanol processor. So basically what they're saying is they took the flour, which they call cannabis or wheat or pot or grass, they call it flour now, which I think is so much nicer. It's not good. Um, and they take that and they process it by these methods. And that's how they extract the, all these um, cannabinoids and terpenes, right? So then in this particular package of THC, THC9 is THC, there's 53.10 milligrams of THC in this entire package. Um, milligrams per serving is 5.31, so about five and a half milligrams for each gun. Uh, for THCA or THCV, no, THC8, 70, sorry, mm -hmm. THC8, there's none, um, which is fine. And THCA, there aren't any CBD, there is 97 point, so just about 98 milligrams of CBD, so it's almost double. So this is what you would call a two to one. So there's two parts THC, I mean CBD, to one part THC. So there's two times as much CBD in there as there is CBD, so that would be a two to one. They have three to one, four to one, they have up to 20 to one. We can get 20 parts CBD, to one part THC. That's gonna take your psychotropic effects almost down to nothing, and it's gonna boost those medicinal effects up, but just having that THC in there is gonna make all of those other ones work better and harder. So that's why it's you know really important to kind of know what you're getting, read the label, and what you want as an outcome, right? Do you, you know? Did I miss it, Kathleen, or did you tell us the difference between THC, CBD, and I know they break down into smaller categories after that. Did I miss that? No, so THC is the psychoactive component. Yeah. That's the psychoactive fidelity. That's the one that kind of gets you, you a little euphoric, maybe, you know, feel a little better in the head, or some people worse in the head, I don't know. <laughs> Um, and the CBD is the anti-inflammatory. That's the one that works on the body, really uh, non-psychoactive. So you will not get any high from that. You did say that, but I missed part of it. Okay? Yeah, that's okay. And then there's no CBD, CBDA in this. So CBDA and THCA is just the raw forms that haven't been processed. Yes. Do you have an addictive component to it? There's no physical um, or psych. Yeah, no, there's no physical addiction. Like you would never have withdrawals like you do from alcohol or benzodiazepines or opioids. But a chronic user 
if they stopped on like suddenly, they might be a little irritable. They might have trouble sleeping for a few nights. Uh, but there's no like physiological damage or you know symptoms, sickness, anything like that. From you know. Anybody have any questions about the, the label slide? Yeah. I know that he didn't tell you anything about turkey. No, on that one, it does it doesn't. Um, the one flour, if it if it was a bag of flour, a bag of flour, a uh, con con container of flour, you would see a lot of them uh, are starting more to test for terpenes now. So on this particular bottle of flour, there is pine, myrcene, terpenaline, limonene, linalool. This, uh, this abolo, why and all, and periocline. So all these terpenes are in here, very small amounts, but they're all in here. And that's what we call a terpene profile. And it, did you say I could open it? Yeah, please. After I do it. <laughs> <laughs> and if, I don't know if anybody could smell that when I open it. We'll be able to pass it around and smell it, but... Uh, that's that, that's what gives it its spell is the terpene profile. Um, and that's you'll find on flour usually. Uh, gummies or uh, you'll also find them on dates because what they do on the bakes is they'll introduce, they'll add in terpenes after they do all the extractions. So once you process flour, uh, by as I said, the, the hydrocarbon CO2 and ethanol processing. You're stripping it of all its terpenes and cannabinoids. Once you make your product, then you can add those back in. So with gummies, they don't add the cannabinoids back in. They usually do like flavoring or, or whatever. Can't really. Yeah? Given the number of products on the market, suppose you have a problem you want to deal with in this way. I'm unclear about even where you start, it's overwhelming. It is. It is. And that's what our company does. So we people, you know, understand what they want to use it for, what they're looking for for an outcome, okay. and what products are the best ones to start with and then go from there. And are you a for profit company or a non profit? We are a for profit company. Okay. Yes. And where are you located? We are actually the uh, half a mile up the road here in Hadley, but we are a woman-owned company. Uh, we have doctors and nurse practitioners that work for us, that are contracted with us, that we've been working with for, like I said, about 10 years now, many years. Um, and we really get out there and kind of educate the community. We are very patient-centric. Uh, there are a lot of companies now that, that do this. When I first started uh, doing this 10 years ago, there was just maybe a handful of doctors that did it. Now, because a lot of, because everything is through telemed, there are many out-of-state companies that have come in and, and, and do it online. Uh, Can I assume you're not covered by insurance? No, unfortunately, none of this is because it's still not federally legal. Answer me why... My insurance covers my meds. Mm -hmm. Tell me why I'm going to switch over. Uh, well, it's organic. It's natural. It's not as taxing on the body. It's not as taxing on the liver. Um, it might make you feel better. <laughs> I mean, there's so many reasons. You know, we, we've seen the oldest person I had been was a 98 year old man. And he, the first year he came in, he was on his cane, you know, walker, he had to get a walker at that point. Stuck, you know, coming in with his, his I think it was his granddaughter that brought him in. And uh, when he came come back the next year, he was a totally different person. And uh, th these are things that we've seen over and over again. I had one guy sit in front of me and tell me, and he was my age, uh, he had been, at, at age 11, he was hit by a tractor trailer. Uh, crossing Route 20 on his bike, and he had, you know, shoulders, hips, the, the, that, that, and the walk. 
And he just didn't, he was so sick of being prescribed pain meds. He was constantly, he was, he was addicted, you know what I mean? And he didn't want to live that way. Uh, through no fault of his own. It's, you know, they're, they're, your body becomes dependent. There's nothing you can do. That, that's why the, the, this whole opioid pandemic that's, that's going on is, is sad because it all stems from, you know, back in the late 80s, early 90s, when one of the pharmaceutical people were on the medical board and said, hey, we're going to create this new thing. It's called the, the pain chart. And we're going to ask everybody who comes in what their pain is. And when they say they're in pain, we're going to give them a pet. And that's how it started. And then next thing you know, there's pill mills, and there's this, and there's that. And uh, So if I want to go uh, know more about my meds, I generally go to a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. Because I figure they know more. They, how about the training for dispensary? So yes. every dispensary employee has to have eight hours of training. Uh, it's called... Um, Responsible, thank you. Responsible, responsible vendor training. So she, she, you can answer this. She works at the dispensary. She's one of the managers. You can go ahead and answer that. Yeah, so every single one of our staff members has to go through this responsible vendor training. Um, they are also constantly doing different virtual trainings on different brands that are being launched. So they are held to that standard by our managers. Um, but just in the CCC, which is the Cannabis Control Commission in Massachusetts, they're required to do certain trades as well. So they unfortunately are not medical professionals, but they are very well versed in all of the products that they carry on the menu and can provide you with all the information that they have. Um, the only difficult thing is that it's tough with medical patients only because they can't guarantee any results. So that's the only little wiggle room that we have, um, but it's like Kathleen was saying, it's all trial and error. It's, there's a lot of different products on the, um, on the menu there's a lot of different stuff to choose from. So when you're in there and you're kind of offering up what you're looking for to the bud tenders, they'll be able to point you in the direction of something that they think would work best. But next time you come in, maybe you're looking for something different. Maybe it didn't work. And that's where the journaling also comes in. So there's a lot of, it works when we're both working together as a team. Um, so as long as you're making sure you're keeping track of everything that you're taking and what you liked and what you did not, um, we can provide you with the best product that we think would work for you. Thank you. And we have an open door policy at our company. Uh, we're one of the very few who do, but all of our doctors and nurse practitioners are available uh, at any time throughout the year. You can call them, you can email, and they are more than happy to get back to you and answer any questions. All of our staff members that, that we work with, uh, we've worked with, so I worked for a previous company uh, that started in 2013, and I helped build that company. It became one of the biggest companies uh, started by education. I built their education platform, and it was sold. Um, I stayed on about a year, and then I left, and another girl that worked with me, her, and I started our own company. So um, when I left, a lot of the... Uh, doctors, nurse practitioners, and staff chose to kind of migrate over with us. So, um, so we've all been working together for many, many years. And we're, one of the things I can say is we are very patient focused. Uh, we are there to help patients, to guide them through uh, whatever questions they have. Um, we help them register with the state. That can be a daunting process because you do have to register uh, with the Cannabis Control Commission, as, as Emily said. That's the overseeing regulatory body of the medical cannabis program here in Massachusetts. So they regulate all of the dispensaries, both legal, uh, recreational, and medical. They oversee the, uh, a lot of the practitioners. Uh, to a point, practitioners are independent, but they set the guidelines, things like that. So um, so we make sure we're in complete compliance with that. Uh, we actually go above and beyond really getting out into the community and trying to do this education. So uh, Emily, I'll let you talk a little bit about Green Thumb and Rise. Perfect. So Green Thumb is our umbrella name. So Green Thumb Industries is what our brands and our retail stores will fall under. 
So as Kathleen had mentioned, Rise is the name of our retail store. Our medical location is here in Amherst. It's about 10 minutes away from here. Um, but we also have a suite of brands, which we will talk about a little bit. Um, so GTI's mission was to create a brand and a product for all of our consumers. So we have a ton of different products to show you and share with you. Um, and I'll graze over all of them, but definitely ones that I think would be most beneficial um, for you all. So here's a little breakdown of everything that we offer. So at the top, you see Incredibles, Bebo, and Dr. Solomon. Those are going to be um, all of our oral ingested um, products. So under Incredibles, we have gummy options, chocolate bars, and hard candies. Under Bebo, we have pastilles, which are very similar to a Smartie or Sweet Tart in consistency and flavor. We also offer gummies and disposable vapes. Um, so just to touch on the edibles really quickly, um, all of our edibles, as Kathleen was talking about, they're all made with just that singular compound of THC. So when we extract, we're not creating a full spectrum edible because that flavor isn't exactly desirable to consumers. So the THC, when we extract that and use that in our edibles, it has virtually no flavor. So you're not going to have an overwhelming cannabis taste in your edibles. But what we will do to, is we add back in minor cannabinoids like you were talking about, like CBD, CBN, CBG, and those help create the desired effects that we are looking to provide. So something like sleep help, something like to help with inflammatory infl <laughs> any inflammatory issues, um, tons of different products to help with the goals that you're looking to achieve. Um, and tons of different flavors, which we will touch on in a little bit. We have a few different disposable vapes options. The Bebo ones specifically are going to be made with distillate, which distillate is just another word for THC only liquid. So when we extract, we're extracting just THC, but we are adding back in cannabis plant deriven terpenes and cannabinoids. Once again, to help achieve the desired effects that you were looking for. Um, and then in Dr. Solomon's, we had already mentioned the tinctures and we also have some topical lotions. Tinctures are ingested sublingually. So you're going to take the dropper, you can put it right under your tongue. That will sit there for about 30 to 60 seconds. Um, then you can swallow it, wash it down with some water. Um, or you can also use them in your drinks if you'd prefer to add the tincture into tea. Um, but what's really, really nice about those tinctures, and Kathleen was getting into this a little bit, is they are super easy to dose. So as I'll show you over there, there's a small dropper tool. Um, so you can, the recommended dosage will be 0.5 milliliters, and you'll see that on the package. But you're able to start as low as you want. And what's nice about that is, is the onset of tinctures is a little bit quicker than edibles. So you'll feel the effects a little quicker, and then at that point, you'll be able to say, I want a little bit more. This isn't exactly to the point I want to be at. Or for next time, you can be like, okay, I'm going to start a little bit lower than that. Um, so it helps you figure out your dosage um, and what works best for you. And then again, in Dr. Solomon's, we have our lotions and topicals. So our lotions are fairly new to the market. We just launched them here at the very end of December. Um, so those are actually going to be transdermal lotions. Um, you'll also see topical lotions on the market too, um, but transdermal lotions work a little bit deeper than the typical topical lotions. So those will hit through to the dermis. So they'll go straight through the epidermis to get a little bit more relief um, for any sort of pain that you might be experiencing. We have a few different options. We have a THC only transdermal lotion, and we also have a CBD THC transdermal lotion. Um, so that will really, really help with any sort of chronic pain, maybe emergency relief. Um, and that transdermal um, uh, well, recipe that we're working on is fairly new to the market. So that is very, very new. Dr. Solomon's, um, the brand team recently created that. So it is proven to be very, very successful in all of our patients that have taken it so far. And the transdermal, you might get a little effect if it's got THC, whereas the topical lotion Correct. won't, right? Yes. Because Topicals don't cross the blood-brain barrier, yes. so you won't. Even if it has 
100 milligrams of THC, you're not going to feel any high effects. With the transdermals, because they do get in deeper, you may feel some, some effects yeah. if it's a high THC. Definitely. Yeah. And then I'll just touch on the rest of them, um, but then we'll move the, from rhythm down, it's mostly going to be any of our inhalables. Uh, so Rhythm is going to be our brand for a premium flower, full spectrum oil vapes, live vapes and concentrates. So the difference between these vapes right here, I'll just touch on briefly. As I had mentioned already, we have distillate vapes. So those are just going to contain that THC and then people can add in what brands and the cultivators can add in whatever they would like for terpenes, flavoring, any sort of additives. Uh, but what we do with Rhythm is we're creating full spectrum vapes. Like Kathleen had mentioned, when we extract the components of the plant, we're extracting everything that contributes to your high. So we're going to pull all of those terpenes, the cannabinoids, including that THC, to give you a nice well-rounded entourage effect. And the flavor of these vapes, the full spectrum and the live, are both going to mimic the plant. So they're going to taste similar to the plant. They're going to have those um, similar effects as the plant would. Um, so there's a very true-to-plant experience in those vapes. As we move down, we have dog walker pre-rolled joints, conveniently sized for a dog walk, so they are mini. So we have those available in five packs as well as singulars, and I'll have one to show you later on. Um, Good Green is another one of our flower brands. Good Green specifically is created um, to create real sustained progress on the war on drugs. So we have a full program with Good Green as a brand um, to help donate to communities that were super, super highly affected by the war on drugs. So specifically black and brown communities. And then, and shine down here, we have another suite of um, products here, with flower, dislip vapes, and infused pre-roll joints. So the and shine you primarily will only see in the Rise stores, but the rest of these products, if you are going to a different um, medical dispensary, you will be able to find these there. We are in almost every dispensary in the state. It's so, like going to Walmart and Target, yeah. you know, and you better get your, your Coke or your Pepsi or your Tide or, you know what I mean? Like all these products now, that's, that's kind of mm -hmm. what, it, what it is. So you go to any dispensary and you buy this, the same products. I mean, it, it's good. It's, it's definitely helpful for people. Yes? So the you will find in your No, in Rye's dispensary. Yeah. And in your we are the medical component of it, so we have doctors and practitioners. Uh, so you would come to us if you want to get your medical card, if you had questions about, you know, using cannabis with your medicine, things like that. Um, we have a incredible website with an education hub on there. So anything that you want to know about cannabis, you can find right on that website. Uh, yes. <laughs> And that's a part. If I need a medical card, yes. I come to you and yes. Yes. So I would be a conversation. Yes, and everything is done uh, right now through telemedicine. Okay. Um, we don't know if they're going to be having new patients coming back into the office or waiting for the Cannabis Control Commission to rule on that. Uh, because of the pandemic, they shifted everything over to telemed. Okay. Um, so, but like I said, if we start seeing new patients in the office, we're about a half mile up the road. Um, otherwise, everything's done over telemedicine through the comfort of your home. It's very convenient. Yeah, user friendly. Can I leave something and go back? Or no, no. So you see the doctor or nurse practitioner once per year. You get certified. Uh, the cost is usually $150. When we come out into the community to the senior centers, we offer it for $99. So if you wanted to book, um, when you booked your appointment in the where, how did you care about us, you just say Catholic Senior Center. And you get the $99 price. Uh, it's good for a full year. As I said, we do have an open door policy. So anytime you need to contact your provider with any questions, you can certainly reach out. Uh, and as a, everybody that works with us, we've been doing this for many years. We do a lot of education, so uh, a lot of the, the girls uh, that work with the providers uh, can answer any questions that you might have. So, uh, you know, it's it's a pretty good program. Are you offering Yes, yeah, at any, any time. You decide within six months from now you want to get your card. Just put it in Hadley Senior Center and you'll get that $99 price.
Yeah. Could you your website? Sh it's right on the flyer. Yeah, that's okay. it. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yeah. Do you have to have the medical certification to be shop at Ross? You do not. Not well at Rise Amherst. You do. But we do have other locations, other Rise stores um, that are adult use and medical. Where are they? So we have three adult use stores right now. They're in Maynard, Chelsea, and Drakeit. So they're mostly all on the eastern side of the state. We are looking to potentially add one over here in this side of the state just because all of our medical stores are on the western side of the state and our recreational stores are on the eastern but that's just the way that it ended up working out. But they are in a transition period and we are transitioning one of our medical licenses to another adult use store. So that adult use license may then come over to a local um, adult use store for you guys. But like I had mentioned, there are a ton of stores in this area and they will all carry our products. So I'm off the top of my head, um, there's Insta, in the it's uh, right here in North Hampton. There's uh, say, say that again. There are two of them. Hadley. In Hadley, there are two. Yes, yes. there's Hadley. Just have just opened up in Hadley. They carry our products. And the heirloom and the what? The heirloom oh, collectors. The heirloom Serrano. The heirloom collectors. How do you spell that? H e i r l o o m. Cross from South and Shelf. Collective, C O L L E C T I V B. And then the doodle down here. Uh, Online. There's in light. Oh, that's, is that the. Hadley. Hadley, yes. And that's right next to our offices, actually. Hadley. Yeah. 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 And, and the difference with medical. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. If I don't have a medical card, can I go to a recreational store? Yes, I was just going to say, the difference between medical and rec, right? So anybody, anybody that's over 21, and they will card you, uh, anybody that's over 21 can go into a recreational dispensary and purchase any product that's available. Are they knowledgeable about... They the are knowledgeable. No, 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 it's much on the medical, but they're knowledgeable of their products for the most part. But the difference is you're going to be paying 20% tax minimum. Some it's up to 25, depending on the time. So as a recreational patient, you're paying 20% tax minimum. You're getting the, the products aren't always the same that are available on the medical side as the recreational side. You can get higher dose products on the medical side. So if you're somebody that needs a gummy that's 50 milligrams because you have unbelievable chronic pain, or you need it more to take less and it put you to sleep at night, you don't want to be buying five milligram gummies because you're going to have to take 10 of them every time you need them. So you want to look for something that's a higher milligram. On the medical side, they have those. Saves your money, it saves your sugar, um, it saves you from having to take, you know, a whole handful at once. Um, and there's also a lot of places have delivery. Um, they have preferred parking. Do they still have curbside pickup? Yeah. So uh, curbside pickup. You can get just point systems. Oh yeah. yeah, a lot of them have point systems. So if you sign up, you can get points. You can get free product. I've got a hundred dollars for the free product at a dispensary before mm -hmm. a couple times. Um, so it's definitely worth it. Yeah. How do you know which stores are recreational versus medical? Uh, usually it'll say it on their website or uh, if you look them up. On our website, we list all of the medical dispensaries and all of their discounts. Oh, and that's another thing. Forgot the biggest thing. As a medical patient, you get discounts, which you do not get as a recreational patient. So as a new patient, you've been going to many dispensaries across the state. If you, uh, a lot of programs are different, but on the, along the lines of, if you purchase uh, $100 worth, you get 50 free. And you can do that. Some of them, it's up $200, right? Uh, every time you get in, put more time, you'll get $50 off your order up to $200. And it's designed to pay for the cost of your medical card. That started with the previous company that I worked for. My colleague actually started that with uh, Netta and Northampton. They were the first ones to do that. Uh, it's called $200 Happier. And uh, she went in and she, she hustled that. So our patients could get free products for getting their medical card. And now almost all the dispensaries across the state did that. Do that. Yeah. Did 
determines <coughs> who determines exactly what to do. The medical side mm -hmm. or the dispensary? You and the in your medical professional, I would say. If you're going to be using a medical, it would you would go to the dispensary and you would say, okay, this is what I'm looking for. You know, a lot of our providers, uh, are, all of our providers are very knowledgeable in the products that are out there. When new products come out, a lot of times we'll have meetings, uh, we'll have Zoom meetings where the manufacturers, uh, we'll have our providers come on and explain the product, uh, what its intended use is, how it works, things like that. So our providers know where to start patients. Uh, they might say, okay, start with a tincture, use it twice a day, this much, see how you're feeling, see how that does for you. Um, if you, if you're, it, it again, it depends on what you're taking it for. If you need to take something to sleep, if you're not sleeping, if you're taking melatonin and if you're getting a hangover from that and you're trying to come off it and you just have to be taken more, you might say, try an edible, try a chocolate bar uh, before bed. Yeah. It's good for one year. The card is good for one year. That's the, the Cannabis Control Commission sets those regulations. Yeah. It's a, because they want to make sure that you're checking in with your doctor because, you know, cannabis is such a taboo medicine that, you know, you never know what could happen. So they want to make sure that you're checking in with your doctor once a year. Yes. So recreational means that anybody over 21 can go in and purchase these products. Joint. A joint, um, edibles, drinks. Um, there's so many different products on the market. Well, does the recreational have, I don't know if this is a question, but does the recreational have the THC and the not have No, pretty much it's the same across the board. It's just the dosing. Uh, you can get higher doses on the medical side because it's medical. Um, and it's usually cheaper on the medical side because you're not paying the 20% tax. Uh, and you're getting a lot of discounts. Uh, and the products are... Uh, they're, they're, you can get, um, like say, a 20 to 1 if you were looking for like something high in CBD. And low in THC. Well, let's for sleep aids. Yeah, so sleep aids, you would probably want to start with some edibles, like an hour before bed. Um, maybe some, you know, some, not necessarily tincture. I don't think that would be strong enough to help you sleep. Uh, but, you know, I would say if the best that I found that I'm, you know, talking to people and uh, personally for sleeping is, is edibles. Because it, it's it's a little bit of a slower onset and it lasts longer throughout the body, so it helps to keep you keep you asleep. And depending on the uh, cannabinoid ratio, uh, it can really help with people who are having like night terrors, nightmares, PTSD, things like that. Just to wrap up the rest of our rise green thumb section here. I wanted to give you guys a quick glimpse of our rides menu. Um, so this is virtually what you will see um, when you walk, when you visit our website online. It will be, um, it'll appear as categories right there. And I have the link right here for you. All right, so this is basically how it's broken down. At the top, you will see all of these discounts like we were just talking about. Tons of promotions, um, tons of different discounts. And we also, uh, here's our first time patients receive, renewing patients, so tons of information right here, but then you'll hit the menu. So you see all the different categories that we have to offer, so you can shop by category. Um, so if you are specifically looking for edibles, you can click right into that edible section. And then as you get in here, you'll see all the categories down the side. So if you are looking for any specific type of edible, there are chocolate bars, hard candies, and so on. You can search by brand. So if you're already familiar with a brand and you're looking for one, and then at the very bottom, you can look by type. So the type will show high CBT, indica, sativa, and hybrid. 
And for those of you who are not familiar, Indica is more thought of as Indica couch. Indica is typically more um, relaxing, more for nighttime use. Sativa strains will lean more towards the opposite direction and it'll be a little bit more uplifting. Um, and then hybrid, we have right in the middle, and then this high CBD. So then way at the bottom. You can get it with or without. So this. Then right here at the bottom, you'll be able to search by effects. So if you are looking for something calming, energetic, happy, relaxed, sleepy, creative, and so on, you can search by all of these categories right down the side of the menu, um, which is super nice and helps you kind of narrow down what you're looking for and what they have to offer. So we have those different. And that wraps up our section of the presentation. Yes. So all of the weed that is sold here in Massachusetts must be grown in Massachusetts. So our growing facilities are in Holyoke and Clinton. So Clinton, Massachusetts, we produce a lot of bulk flour and it's all shipped over to Holyoke, Massachusetts. And that's where it then goes either to the kitchen to be made into an edible. It goes to extractions to be turned into concentrates or vaporizers. Or it can just go directly towards um, any of our apes of flour, quarters, and so on, or pre-rolls. So that's where it's kind of sorted out and decided is it polio. But it's all grown right here in Massachusetts, and that'll be the same across the board for any...